Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Great. How was your day today? It was okay. What happened? What makes a city hustle? Nothing extraordinary. It takes a lot of unknown people, unseen hands, unread hearts, borderless bodies. An average day will be, I walk in at 7.30. I go upstairs and wake the kids. There are two boys. I'll wake them up. Um, make sure their teeth is brushed, the hair is combed and come downstairs and I'll make them breakfast and get them out the door by 8 o'clock so they can take the bus. Like Angela, you work, you take care of the details of other people's lives, you put together the everyday life of the city, no fixed hours, no overtime pay, no benefits. $220 a week, flat. And once they're gone, I'll sit and have breakfast for about 10 minutes. And then I'll start cleaning up. I clean the kitchen, I'll go upstairs, make all the beds, vacuum, do the bathrooms, everything. I'll stay there for whenever the parents come out, they'll have dinner. And whenever they finish having their dinner, they'll call me and I'll have my dinner after. And then I'll clean the kitchen. And if they have to go out, they'll leave at around maybe 7 or so, or 7.30, and they'll go out to a movie or whatever. And I'll stay with the kids. Sometimes we'll play games, or I'll just um, stay there and make sure that they go to bed. Um, I'll read the little boy a story. You get here how you can. You stay quiet. You live anonymously. You live underground. You send money home. You're taking care of two economies, back home and here. You take care of other people's families. You can't think too much about it. It hurts. But your own kid has to wait. And like every day, that sometimes we'll go to the park and we'll play and they'll run around. I used to imagine that it was my own child. Like, you know, wonder if my daughter knew what I was doing now, like playing with the kids. Would she be mad at me? Would she be jealous? Would she be angry? And I'll say, like, I'm raising somebody else's kid, and my daughter is not here. I can't raise her. Hello, good night. Hi, sweetie. Hi, Mom. How are you doing? Fine. What are you doing now? Nothing. Nothing. Do you watching TV again? No. You sound tired. Are you tired? No, I'm not. How was school today? Good. Good. No complaint. No. <laughs> you sure? I I come home early today. Oh, you guys came home early? Oh, that's yeah. right. You get half day, right? I belong around ten o'clock. Mhm. Mm when I just came, I thought maybe I'll spend maybe two years, save some money. Enough money, I thought it would be, you know, 
it would have been much easier to save money save enough money to go home and maybe go back to school and try to do something in our life maybe enough so i can build a little room for us to live There's as many as 200,000 undocumented migrants living and working in Canada. They do the low-wage jobs, sewing clothes in Montreal, cleaning high-rises in Vancouver, swaddling babies and building houses in Toronto. They are a part of the third world inside Canada's borders that subsidizes our first world economy. Bueno, mis sueños y mis esperanzas más que todo era venir y pagar lo que debo en Costa Rica. Pagar lo que debo y, qué sé yo, dos, tres años regresarme. There's a rich housing boom in British Columbia and Ontario and a shortage of Canadian workers. A quarter of the construction workers in Ontario are undocumented borderless. That's about 76,000 workers. Most are men from Latin American countries whose economies have collapsed. Se dice que en la construcción en Canadá lo importante, lo que importa es la producción. No importa cómo queden las casas. Si quedan desquijaradas, queden feas, como sea, no le importa. Entonces que queden como les dé la gana, pero que sea rápido. A un canadiense le pueden pagar a 25 dólares la hora, 30 dólares la hora, mientras que a un ilegal le pagan 12 dólares la hora. Y sabiendo y, y, y desempeñando el mismo trabajo, 